We are live. No, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm recording, but it's not live. Uh, so, let's see here. I don't know how much editing is going to go into this out of laziness. Probably none. I am uploading the very first video of Savvy Snacks. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Savvy Snacks. First, I would like to thank uh, my wife for watching this video. Uh, because in the end, really, babe, this, this video is for you. Uh, this is a confession. But we'll get to that. So, uh, I wasn't sure if it would be better to upload a bunch of short videos um, or one long video. You know, do you, do you want a lot of views? Do you want a lot of watch time? Uh, and then I realized I'm not doing this for monetization. So uh, click that unlike button and desubscribe, please. Um, savvy Snacks. Let me tell you the origins of Savvy Snacks. So at the place I work at uh, was a warehouse. I work at a warehouse. And they used to have a snack rack at work, which was just filled up with snacks and drinks from Sam's Club and it was great. You just go grab whatever you wanted on your 10 minute break and, and you know, have some chips or cookies, whatever. They had some neat stuff in there. Uh, but there were budget cuts and the snack rack went away and we're, I, I don't know, we're not, we're not isolated, but if you want to go get something, you got to take your full 30 minute lunch break and the closest thing is a 7-Eleven like two miles down the road. So for, for me, that's that's my whole lunch break, getting getting in and out of the car and everything. So I thought there's there's a void to be filled here and I could make extra money where I'm already at. So I needed to uh, bring in a snack machine because people want snacks, they're going, they're driving away, they're using up their breaks, they're spending good money to, to buy snacks, what if snacks were already available for sale at work? So first thing I did, I contacted the owner and uh, I got I got permission to put in a vending machine. So I went shopping Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp and Craigslist and eBay and wow, everybody wants a lot of money for even a used machine. Um, I, I contacted some people, I had some deals that were almost worked out, and then uh, I, I ended up, I found what's called a Snack Mart. Uh, it's a tabletop uh, vending machine, uses no electricity, um, only accepts quarters, and it vends from the rear of the machine. I mean, like the, the, the items drop from the back of the machine and um, there are no lights inside of it. It's, so you can't really see, it, there's still items, there's no items at the front. The, the rear of the coils are at the front. So you're looking in this little window. Mind you, there's no lights inside this thing. It's all just dark gray. And you gotta look inside this window and, and see if there's a snack at the end of the coil. And it's, it's not it's not super convenient. I don't I don't know who designed it. Piece of crap, really. So I bought one, and uh, it was available. Uh, I think it was Facebook Marketplace. Uh, they were asking a hundred dollars for it. I offered them sixty, and they accepted it. I was like, great. I'm in business. I've got a snack machine. I can take it to work. I can set it up myself. Uh, I, can, I can transport it myself. I can keep an eye on it at work. Uh, I can make sure it's refilled, I can make sure it's clean. This is great. So I uh, went and, and, and picked it up, uh, checked, made sure all the all the coin mechanisms worked and every everything seemed good, got it in the car, got it home, uh, took it apart and painted it. Uh, it was uh, dark gray inside and out. I did not like it, it, just, it did not catch your eye. It looks like something that would be lost and forgotten about in the shadows. And um, like I said, there's no light inside. It's dark inside the box. The only way to see in is one window in the front that's maybe four inches tall and 16 inches wide. And, and then it's just, it's just one little little place to view in and there's not much light. So you can, and, and then it bends from the, it, the items drop from the rear and then it slides 
down the ramp to the, the front where you, so you actually retrieve the item right below where you put the quarters in. But I said, it drops from the rear. And, um, but I, I, I painted it uh, white inside and out uh, to, you know, white inside to help reflect lights and make things uh, easier to see. Um, and then following the original design, some of the, the grays, I don't remember if it was the lighter gray or the darker gray, but the other shade of gray that was originally on the box painted a nice bright red, a very eye-catching McDonald's Coca-Cola red. <laughs> and um, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. I got uh, a couple of cheap little magnetic puck lights that take AAA batteries and I put inside the, the machine, and both in the top portion where the snacks are. My thinking was people would be able to see the snacks better, but they're motion activated and there's no motion inside the machine, so the lights don't come on until I service the machine and open the, the access door, the lid, the hood. And, um, but the, the puck lights down below that are actually where you, where you retrieve your item once, once it falls, that are down below, those are actually pretty sensitive and they go off uh, when you just walk near the machine. And that's really great. It was accidental. It's it's a bug that's become a feature because um, you're just near the machine and it lights up and it's kind of like, hey, and it's 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 the retrieving area. So I feel like that, that probably gets people thinking about retrieving something from the vending machine and maybe like, oh, is there something in there? Hmm, not yet, not yet, but what are our options? So. I feel like I feel like that that's worked out really well. I brought it to work. I set it up. Uh, I've had it there for two weeks now. The thing only accepts quarters, and people aren't carrying quarters on them. Quarters are heavy. They loud, unfortunate. They, no one likes quarters. So I put a little sign on the oh, it's a sign. It's a handwritten sticky note that says um, if you need quarters to get a hold of me and. Um, I tell people, like, I, I even accept Zelle. You can Zelle me a dollar, and I've got four quarters in my pocket that I'll give you, and you can you can go use the machine. So uh, it, it does accept cashless payment. If I'm there, I accept cashless, and then I'll, I'll give you quarters to go use. Um, items do jam. We're going to say that they don't fall uh, about 25% of the time. The larger items being uh, the one ounce chip bags, little snack bags, sometimes those just seem a little too big and they hit the back instead of sliding down uh, the ramp. And it might, it might partially be the, the way that I loaded them into the machine as I've done my uh, two weeks of research um, I, maybe, I maybe could have gotten the bags down further or maybe it was behind, you know, like the long side of the coils to not dispense properly, but bags are getting jammed. Um, neat, neat little thing I'm kind of proud of. I, I took um, some, some stickers, um, some, you know, just happy little smiley stickers, flowers on them type of stickers, cute animals, happy stickers. And uh, I took uh, some glue dots, like double, almost like double-sided uh, double sticky tape, but they're just the, the little tiny round dots. And I would put that on the back of the sticker, and then I would stick that on the back of like random bags, like random cookie bags, random chip bags. So if you did look in that little window to see what the options are, you could see just the back sides of these, these little white tags sticking up. So every now and then, randomly, when you when you get a, a, an item, it comes with a happy little sticker on it. And my coworkers are, have actually really liked those. You know, it's a fun little surprise and it's neat. And then that could be a marketing thing, as, as far as um, working with partnering with another company. Like you know, let let's say you're you're in um, business A, who's right next door to business B. And you could you could work with you know your, your your business A is your location. You could work with business B and have coupons for their services or product on the back of just spitballing, just spitballing. You know I mean, why not coupons from business A? I mean they'd probably love you a lot more. That might even be better than having to pay a commission. It's like look when people win these prizes, they can get 
more of a reason, more of an incentive to spend money at your location. So not only are there more likely to be customers here, but they're more likely to spend money. You're both more likely to profit. And then the, the customer feels super happy because not only did they win their prize, which is awesome, but then they get the, the, the bonus that they weren't even expecting, the coupon or uh, discount and go along with it, or, or just a sticker. Stickers are great, people love stickers. Um, let's see, had that machine two weeks, jams a lot, only takes quarters, I accept Zell, bring quarters with me. Um, it, I've collected $33 from it, so it has uh, vended 33 times, uh, three times might have been myself, but it, the honey buns have been doing the best. Chips were doing okay, Cheetos, um, Hot Cheetos were doing okay. Um, last week was better than this week, so like I said earlier, the, the company has had some budget cuts and that has extended to staff and hours for remaining staff. So not a, not a ton of people in the building, still made uh, half of what I spent on the machine in the first two weeks. Um, so there are a few restaurants that have opened uh, on my commute to and from work, and there's a strip of four restaurants and a hair salon all right next to each other, and I thought each one of those places would be great for bulk vending. And so, because, you know, I'd been looking at full line, but I just had the, the deals that just weren't working out for one, one reason or another. And even if I found a machine super cheap, I still got to figure out how I'm going to get it moved. And there are solutions, but I'm going to have to pay someone else to do heavy lifting for me. I, I don't even have a tow hitch on my car. So it, it becomes a big ordeal. I'm, I'm going to have to shell out some cash that I don't have a ton of. But smaller machines, gumball machines, candy machines. Um, those are lower cost, easier to get into spaces. They fit in your car and I can move them by myself. I can service these by myself, totally low maintenance. I mean, the gumballs aren't gonna expire for six months. You can set it up and make sure it's taken care of once in a while. But I've heard of people not going back to a gumball stand for months and then you just go and you collect money. And if you got multiple machines in multiple locations, that's where it really compounds and makes the money. So I, I've, I've, I've just been convinced, I've been listening to podcasts and YouTube videos, um, huge shout out uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this um, I don't have an audience I guess you can't have an audience if you don't have videos so I shout out to uh, Howard Hospitality Group first off for for Jonathan um, just just getting all of the information out there on as many platforms as possible because on, on YouTube there's um, a weekly collaboration video between Extreme Vending, uh, Galaxy Games 843, 863, oh gosh, Galaxy Games 8, 843, just call them Galaxy Games. Um, so, I, I, sorry, Extreme, I say Howard Hospitality Group, Extreme Vending, and uh, Galaxy Games. So, those guys, bring a lot of information and I've just learned so much and I've learned about bulk vending and sticker vending and, and claw machines and it just sounds like that's the way to go. These machines are small enough, I, I can move them, I can manage them, uh, I can service these things myself, they're simple enough, I can work on them, they're small enough, I can get them into spaces. So this just really seems like the way to go. Uh, I did go to his candy machines CandyMachines.com? Is that the name they say? Oh, I got the invoice right over there. Yes, CandyMachines.com. Um, I used the Howard Hospitality Group uh, affiliate link. I I used the uh, Discord um, discount code. I, I saved a bunch of money. And uh, first, I got a bubble gum. 
machine, which is the uh, red machine back here. And um, of course, if you've got a bubblegum machine, you need bubblegum, right? So I also ordered gum to go with it. And I, I thought that I had ordered the same size bubblegum as the uh, bubblegum dispenser it is built for. It is designed to dispense the uh, one inch gumballs, you know, ping pong ball size standard gumballs. And these are the almost like half inch gumballs, teeny tiny. And at first I was a little disappointed with myself, but uh, my wife, she, she pointed out that it could be really cool to get, you know, like six gumballs and they're different flavors and then, you know, they last longer because they, they lose their flavor pretty quick. But in the future, I'll get the right size gumballs. So that was mistake number one. Um, and then uh, I'm just, I'm so confident in that, but hearing that, you know, you just, you can't have just the gum by itself. Um, there's really the, the, the trifecta of candies, um, bubblegum, Reese's, or just Reese's Pieces, sorry, bubblegum, Skittles, and peanut M&Ms being the big one. And I did, at, at work, on the whiteboard, I wrote, you know, what do you want in the snack machine? And peanut M&Ms was number one, uh, and then Skittles was further on the list. Um, so I did, I did decide to invest in a uh, triple shop, an XL triple shop, also from candymachines.com. And uh, I, to save a couple of dollars, because I'm, I'm cheap, uh, I, I went with the, uh, they're, they're all three candy, but it comes from the factory, candy, bubblegum, candy. And uh, if you want the candy dispensing mechanism, uh, you can save a couple of dollars by installing it yourself, to do the self-install. Well, it doesn't come with directions, but it doesn't need to come with directions because it's so freaking simple. It took me two damn hours. And I was searching on Google, and I could not figure it out. And I've heard about the great customer service that Kevin at CandyMachines.com offers. And I thought, well, you know, it's, it's unlikely that um, their customer service is even available if the owner is literally the guy that answers the phones. So, but you know, I was, I was desperate because I could not get the, the wheel to sit all the way down. And I could take them, the candy mechanisms out of one of the other ones because it was just this middle one that had the gum in it. Uh, I took the gum, all the gum mechanism out, and then uh, I just could not get the candy wheel to sit where it's supposed to. And I could take the mechanisms out of the one next to it. And I could put the hardware that I've been trying to put in the middle one into that one. I could not get it. Long story short, coin mechanism had just been pushed back a little bit so the the teeth of the gear in the back of the coin mechanism were pushed in and, and blocking the the teeth of the gear uh, of, of the candy wheel so i just had to just give that a tiny tiny little 16th of an inch tug and um it worked just fine but of course i didn't figure that out until after i tried calling candy machine uh, dot com found out that Google had misled me and I had called, I think it was bubblegummachine.com. It was something else. It was not candymachine.com. And I was talking to this lady and she got the invoice number from me and she was like, well, I don't have that invoice. I think you got that machine somewhere else, but I'll try to help you anyways. And uh, she had me send her videos and we, and, and it was just that dumb little coin mechanism was pushed in. Um, so we got that figured out, and uh, I got the thing fully assembled on the stand, and I just put some gumballs in it to test, because I have a shitload of gumballs now. And um, it, of course, it, it fully works. I do need to adjust the wheel. Um, of course, the, the candy is going to be put in there a little bit smaller, and go with uh, Reese's Pieces, uh, Peanut M&Ms, and Skittles. And um, I, think, I think I'll be in business, you know? I've been... I've been calling some places, I've been uh, emailing places, I'm doing a ton of research. I've been using ChatGPT to help me write uh, emails, proposal letters, 
Um, of course, you know, I go through and, and, and edit them, but it's a great foundation and if you give it specifics of, of what you want. Um, so I really feel like this, this could be a good success. Um, I've got the gumball machine, the three candy machine, and uh, the stand for a flat machine being, you know, stickers, uh, temporary tattoos, Pokemon cards. I have already bought the inventory for the flat machine. Uh, I found bulk Pokemon cards on Amazon really cheap. Um, I, I got 250 of those. Uh, I got a bunch of uh, Avengers superheroes tattoos and um, Mario Super Mario Brothers uh, stickers and then of course the little white envelopes and I, I packaged them all up and I wrote out the math how much each one costs and then um, you know like what what the profit is per, per each each one um, so that, that puts me in four four machines I got the snack mart at work. Um, I got my bubble gum machine, and I got the, the triple shop, uh, the XL triple shop candy machine. Uh, I've got a flats machine on the way, and there was really um, solid service and and a uh, convincing argument. By my own self to myself uh, to purchase a claw machine. Uh, not a full size claw machine, not a giant claw machine, a mini claw machine. It is 13 inches wide, and I believe it is 13 inches deep, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's about five or six feet tall. Um, the thing weighs 100 pounds total. I also got it from candymachines.com used the the Howard Hospitality Group link and the Discord uh, referral code, saved a bunch of money there, and uh, I think this, this claw machine is gonna pay for itself as soon as I find somewhere to put it. So I think miniature claw machines, this is my, my grand plan here, right? So claw machine, and it has various prizes and, and things in it uh, and it has the the prize locker up on top of it so you know you can get the golden egg inside the machine it's got the key and you can get the big you know super prize in the prize locker of course take a picture uh, of yourself with it and send it to the email address found on the machine um so claw machine and uh, about half of the stuff inside of it is Pokemon, like Pokemon uh, packs of cards, uh, little two inch Pokeballs that have little, little Pokemon figurines in them. Um, and then it's got other things in it, ring pops and, and just, you know, little things that you would find typically in a claw machine mix, little plush or, or plastic toys. And uh, like I said, the, the golden egg that unlocks uh, the prize locker at the top, which I feel like a, a nice big uh, stuffed Pokemon, right? So you got Pokeballs, Poke uh, card packs in the machine, big plush Pokemon in the prize locker of the machine, and then right next to that have the flats dispenser that has Pokemon cards in it. So you've got your Pokemon claw machine if people are playing that and maybe they're feeling a little bummed if they didn't win the, the Pokemon prize they were trying to get but you can still 50 cents right here get a guaranteed Pokemon card most of them have two except the really good ones like those those foil cards I don't I don't know anything about Pokemon cards so if there was a valuable one in that stack it is going in the machine because I don't know um, but anyway, so the, the ones that, that didn't look obviously impressive, you know, like the ones that weren't all uh, glittery looking, uh, I put I put two cards with with each of those. Um, so that's a nice little, little bonus surprise. They're going to be in the Pokemon card packs. Well, not, not packs, but the sleeve. 
you buy one Pokemon card, you get two. Hey, or a really good one. So I feel like that's gonna be some really satisfied customers. Um, the, the, third, the third part of that attack plan, uh, I've been looking at where the Pokey stops are for, for Pokemon Go and um, looked at like which ones are, are feasible locations for a claw machine. Like a few of them are restaurants. And I, I went and I looked up at photos of the restaurants because I'm not getting out a lot right now. Um, so work had cut hours, gave everybody a five day weekend. Um, and I broke my foot <laughs> day one. So I was up on the sofa with my foot up and a pack of frozen beans on it for for like the whole week almost and um i was just doing all kinds of research and i was emailing these places and i found a couple of restaurants that are pokey stops and uh, i was looking at their photos like on facebook and looking at their lobby and trying to see if they had machines or if they had uh, room for machines and i used chat gpt to to write help me write a letter um, that explains, you know, what a, what a valuable resource it would bring in uh, to, to their location to have this for all the customer satisfaction. And ChatGPT, I don't know what they're thinking. They Every time I have ChatGPT write like an offer letter or a proposal letter to these locations, they always try to throw in a paragraph about sharing commission. It's like, mm, let me just delete, 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 delete. Because if you don't have to pay anything, no, you're providing a heck of a service for these people and their facilities. Um, especially if it's already a Pokestop. I mean, if you're offering uh, prizes that have discounts right back to their location, I mean, this is, this is, this is gonna be huge. So I've got some restaurants that I'm looking at, but I think they open at 11. And I've missed my schedule. I've never been able to be there at 11 when they open. But I've driven by at like 11:30, and the place is the, the, there's a wing place right in the middle. You know, they, these five buildings, four restaurants, and a hair salon, and there's a wing place, and that place is packed. And that's where I want to try to get some machines. Yeah, uh, some people have said, well, because it is a food place, they might not want like the bubble gum machine. But that was my first thought was. You know, hey kids, calm down, have some bubble gum, or you did good in the restaurant, have some bubble gum on the way out the door. But a claw machine or a card machine, I think that would do phenomenal. Card machine next to a claw machine, Pokemon themed, it's gonna be huge. So that's my confession, uh, Crystal. I, I have um, invested some money on my credit card into bulk vending, which being the bubble gum and, and candy machines, flat vending. Um, and then I, I did take out a small loan to get a mini claw machine, which should be here uh, in the near future. And now I have uh, pressure to find locations, or uh, one really good location is all I need, just one good one to, to place the machine. Um, I'm looking at restaurants, of course I'm starting near my house, our house. Uh, I'm starting near where I live and kind of working my way out from there. And I'm, I'm emailing and I'm, I'm, I'm calling and contacting and um, I've got, I'm confident I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna make it happen. In the past, I've always tried to be the producer of something. Like I'm, I'm gonna be a one-man factory. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make candles or uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't even think of what some of the uh, oh survival survival packs um, I was always the one that was producing and now I don't I don't need to make candy people want candy people want Pokemon cards people want to play claw machines I just have to find somewhere that will allow me to place these things and I really do feel like it can be a growing empire. <laughs> empire. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch right now, but I think um, I think it can. It's it's gonna happen. I can move these machines myself. These little ones don't take any electricity. Um, that's huge. And just 
just because I'm, I'm proud of it. I'll share this real quick. So, um, how to how to market myself when I go when I go into these places? I came up with a uh, trifold, a trifold brochure. See that savvy smacks. Um, and I've got my little trifold brochure that's like, you know, what you get from partnering with us. This whole section's on benefits uh, from satisfied customers, you know, uh, and, and uh, this one's all about happier employees if you got a warehouse or something. Because I, I was starting with, with full line vending. I'm thinking snacks and drinks, but really I'm, I'm, I'm liking this bulk vending and uh, like the claw machine ideas. Um, I've got, you know, all kinds of like, you know, contact information promises. So I, I'm, really, I'm really proud of my, my uh, trifold pamphlet. And I did not want to have to fold a hundred of these by hand and try to, you know, get it get it lined up just just right and you know, oh this one's a little crooked. So I made I made this here, uh, which is uh, it, it actually took a couple of iterations, but I just used a folder, a hanging folder. You print out your trifold brochure, which of course doesn't have the creases in it at the time of the printing, and then in here like so Pick the corner so, so you've got your page which sits in there and you fold the flap see it's got this corner secure this side secure and then I just go like boop boop and increase the seams and then Trifold brochure. It's nice to meet you. My name is Jesse. I'm with Savvy Snacks. Uh, so, this is where it all begins. This sounds like what somebody would say if, you know, they thought something was going to get big. Thanks for watching. Savvy Snacks. Don't kill me, Chris.